So we are in uh, Taking Responsibility, still Chapter 3. Many partners of adoptees decide they do not want to live this way. They leave, thus fulfilling the adoptee's greatest fear, abandonment. How can trauma victims learn to stop doing what it is they are doing to cause the very thing they fear the most? The first thing is to become aware of what they are doing, acknowledge it, and then take steps to change what they are doing or not doing. This is difficult because they are very sure that the problem is being caused by the other person. Again, there's a lack of self-reflection. So we kind of talked about like the self-sabotage. Um, and I'm not going to say that, of course, there aren't going to be, like, independent issues on each thing, right? Like, red flags or um, maybe, like, what you can and can't handle. But I definitely think that for us as adoptees that um, having therapy and working through our traumas will definitely help whether you're a happy adoptee or not, right? So whether you had a good experience or not, there's still underlying trauma and trauma responses that you may not even realize you're doing. So I'm just putting that out there. Anyway, another reason this is not easy to vote is because many of those partners have become second nature. Sorry, not partners, patterns. It is. It seems as if it is impossible to stop, but it isn't. Behavior is something that can be controlled, even if the feelings which precipitate the behavior cannot. There do seem to be some people who have so much rage that they cannot control their behavior. Many of the people are behind. Sorry, many of these people are behind bars. Which, by the way, um, adoptees and former foster youth do make up 40% of the prison systems as well as mental health institutions and the troubled teen industry, uh, that is very alarming, right? Like, extremely alarming. I'm continuing on. But most people do not shoot others or even hit them. There is a limit to their use of force or intimidation in relation to others. If there is a limit, then it can be controlled. And the behavior, whether it is shouting, throwing things, or pinning someone against the wall, can be changed. But it takes effort. It takes giving up the high or exhilaration one gets when one lets go with one's anger. It takes commitment to the relationship one is in and giving up the childish acting out. Always think of the two-year-old having a tantrum when you feel like acting out like that. Is that really the age you want to be? Does your partner, wife, husband want to be in a relationship with a two-year-old? Would you? It is difficult to think that it might be fear that is feeling the rage. The fear of one's lovability, worthiness, and competence. Because of one's own questions about that, any hint of someone else may be questioning, it is the cause of rage. In Chapter 2, Reality Check, it is pointed out that many adoptees exaggerate normal interpretations of things so that observations are seen as criticism, disappointments are interpreted as betrayals, disagreements are seen as rejection, suggests suggestions are left as control etc these are the landmines that many people who are in relationships with adoptees complain about because not all people react this way others get caught off guard at the reaction adoptees have to seemingly innocuous statements any adoptee who is doing this must stop <clears throat> Really look into, sorry, yeah, stop. Really look at the situation and honestly evaluate it. It means taking responsibility for knowing you are not taking responsibility for what you are doing to others and how you are affecting others. Okay, so basically, 
what she is saying, um, she's broken it down into a way that is, um, uh, talking about emotional intelligence, okay? So, feeling anger is very normal, right? Anger in itself is a normal re emotion. Let, let's be clear about that. Um, and I will tell you that naming your emotions will help you. Understanding that there are coping mechanisms to your emotions will help you, right? And I, I, I may have spoken about it before, but here I'm going to give you guys an example, right? When I started on TikTok and educating people, and I had kept people, mostly, right, especially adoptive parents, speak over us, I got very angry. And I was yelling. Now, yelling isn't, like, the worst thing at all, but I can tell you that it was truly affecting not only my mental health, but my child's mental health and, you know, my other family members, right? It was that rage, and it just seeped out of me. Um, and I did take a break for a while, and then I came back, um, and I, I had been doing therapy, and I found a way to really decide to pick and choose my battles, right? But also understand that a lot of the times, these people don't understand how they're, how we feel because they don't have the same lived experience, right? And it's understanding that there's a, an emotional intelligence in there where you have to recognize that there are different perceptions to uh, situations, right? You can have your emotions, which are completely valid, you can have your experiences, which are completely valid. But understand that other people may not see that that way, right? Other people may have different feelings and experiences, which are also valid. And it's, it's learning to see things in different points of view and learning how to juggle that and keep calm at the same time. Right. It's one reason why I specifically chose to start this page and this channel, both on TikTok and here, was that I felt like I was better received without showing my face. I was better. I was. Um, I felt like I was able to get through to more people, um, and have people really like perceive me better being calmer and not have my personal stories within TikTok, you know, because it's more relatable, right? Now, that being said, if you follow me on TikTok, on this page, the Adoptee Healing and Resources, you will see that I still get hate from the kept claiming that I don't validate others sorry that I don't validate adoptees experiences who don't agree with me when yet they could literally scroll through and see that I literally validate everyone so I kind of just laugh at it right I've gotten some hate I have my filters on I delete some comments it is what it is um, you may be seeing cap cut videos cause I'm, I'm at the point where, you know what, we're going to take those hate comments and we're going to use it. We're either going to highlight how adoptees are treated or we're going to use it for, um, showing research purposes, right? Like, uh, I have a couple of videos up for, uh, the other day where I talked about both blank slate theory and, um, uh, I put something else up and I can't remember what it was, but it was all, um, resources of statistics, right? So, these individuals 
can easily access those that information if they truly care. Now, will they care? I, I can't force that, right? I can only do so much. Do I hope that I open up their mind to, you know, learn how to research and, and validate those things? Absolutely, right? And the other thing is, like, a lot of them always claim, like, oh, the happy adoptees, and they don't validate that. I never claimed that there weren't happy adoptees. I'm a happy adoptee, right? I had a good experience. That doesn't mean that there isn't trauma, right? But it also doesn't negate that majority of adoptions, or, uh, sorry, the majority of adoptees feel otherwise, right? So just because the few of us, the, the rarity of the happy adoptees, which seem to overtake the adoption industry, right, doesn't erase the negativity and the need for change. And that's why I try to keep my channel more about the legalities that we face, right? Because just because I have a happy adoption, just because I got lucky that my parents were trauma informed, doesn't mean that there aren't legalities that we face lifelong. And that's where I, I try to focus the most. Um, and try to take my story out of it because those are relatable things, right? But um, even when I do that, I get accused of invalidating others. So I, I just laugh at this point, you know. You, you, sometimes you gotta pick and choose your battles. So uh, that's what I have to say on the commentary. And I will see you guys tomorrow for the next part.